next, KFC Radio 1, the Demonair Film Hour, Films and Shit. Welcome to the Debonair Film Hour. Get your cigars and brandy and tune in for a host of conversations of films and why they're artful. So, Peter, we're starting with I Have Seen and I Have Not Have Seen. Yes, A Quiet Place. Did you watch the trailer? I didn't watch anything about it, man. That's how this thing works. Oh, okay. I, I thought you were going to watch the trailer. <laughs> no, you no, gotta, no. Just, no you gotta, what you got to do is you got to watch the trailer. Okay, so do you know anything about it? Did you read the Wikipedia? Did you read no, the synopsis? Nothing. I've got nothing. Yeah. So, it's weird. It's, it's like... Uh, this post-apocalyptic movie where these monsters emerge you don't really get where or how they emerged but basically they they're blind and they have super amazing hearing Uh, so basically you have to be super quiet or they fucking rip you open like a can opener like they have these weird like arms that are super sharp and they like just you know okay destroy anything so the people are like you, it's the first time I've actually seen a movie where they use sign language, but it Ooh. wasn't because they were, de- because it, it wasn't because they were deaf. That's I mean, an one of the characters. Thing. Wow. Okay. One of the characters is deaf in the movie, which I thought that was actually pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. And so she really wants to hear because like she wants to hear what she's doing. Mm-hmm. So if she's too loud, then the fucking monsters come. Like oh shit, I see. There's a scene. Yeah, in the very beginning of the movie, there's like this tragedy because you know, they have this thing that makes too much noise and, you know, Mm -hmm. something terrible happens. But anyway, you know, it's such an interesting movie nowadays, right? Like, it's just good social commentary. Mm -hmm. It seems like you can't say a thing nowadays, you know? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Like, like, you know, the government could have weaponized uh, Antifa into these (laughs) monsters, right? uh, You know? These shredders? The minute you say anything, (laughs) the shredders come, right? And everyone's just like, shh, like using sign language to spout their political opinions, right? (laughs) <laughs> like that's uh, the, a PC and place. I other, see it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a, a, a quiet PC place. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhat <laughs> is the is the name of the film. Actually, it's it's a quiet PC place. You're like, all right, all right. It's very nice. You know, okay. And the guys, just okay. like hello. Just like, Shh. And then you know what happens <laughs> is the monsters get triggered. Yeah. That's what happens. Any okay, form so, of discourse. So who, above any form of discourse above a whisper is considered a microaggression <laughs> <laughs> 20 hertz it's a fucking harassment right right right, right. Oh, so yeah. like their alarm oh, goes yeah. off you know um but yeah so the, the other interesting thing is they actually used a quiet place part of the trailer and you know when mm-hmm. you first go to, into movies and they have the the advertisement for like don't be a Tommy texter or like yeah. don't be a Sally explainer or whatever yeah. they didn't have that they just had the monsters and it's like enjoy the movie and then like you know like they used a quiet place as a way to be like shut the fuck up <laughs> you know and you know what was interesting is that was the quietest quietest movie theater I've ever been in in my life everyone that must was have, so okay. damn Everyone was <laughs> so quiet. Cool. Like you, you didn't even hear people eating popcorn. I feel like subconsciously that ad worked. I think they just think the movie theater is part of the world of the film in some weird fucked up way, and they're like, oh, yeah, God, some extension. Quiet. Well, yeah, because they they sort of used the the trailer to break the fourth wall. They did. Like they, I, I can't remember what the text was, but it's just like. Uh, oh yeah, no. It was people in, they they had a scene where people were in the movie theater and they were trying to eat really slowly, and then <laughs> yeah. the one guy eats popcorn too loud and then he gets snatched out of his seat. Dude, that's setting a low bar. Oh my god, you just have to eat one piece of yeah. popcorn wrong and you're shredded. Oh, dude. Well, he he was like, <laughs> and he was like a, he was like too loud, and then yeah. So <laughs> that's 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 sad, man. That's crazy. Yeah, but so, I mean, it, it was sort of. What happens at the it end of the film, though, man? Like, what happens? You want me to just... Okay, so yeah, just, just spoil slow it. it? Yeah. yeah, okay, I'll just n- nuke it. All yeah. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> what happens is the deaf girl, she has a hearing aid, and the hearing aid interferes with the alien's ears. Okay. All right. But 
you don't get to find out what happens. Okay, but like it's, the girls, the girls' like, deafness was, ends up being a positive thing. That that's basically yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, exactly. All right, I see the little turn but, there. So so, but like the the whole beginning of the movie is them like there's so many scenes of the main character, the lead, the father figure, just uh-huh. shaking and going. Shh. <laughs> there's like twenty of those. <laughs> Like there's so many, and then there's like yeah. scenes of her like quietly doing laundry, yeah. them quietly eating dinner. It's like fuck, I get yeah. it. But then toward just at the very end of the movie, they have like a face off with the aliens. But it's like you don't even get to see what happens. It's like she finds out. Like the other thing that's annoying is you find out why the what the the weakness of the aliens is before the characters in the film do. Well, that sounds frustrating, man. But like, this is well, what that, I'm, that's, that's I'm, just a, I, yo, that's, I'm gonna fucking yeah. watch this movie though. But I'm also interested yeah. in the sound design, how like the world was created as quiet as it needed to be. You know, that seems like well, a cool they fucking had, reason uh, to check it out. The guy put this sand everywhere, and they wear bare feet. That oh, was that's actually brilliant. cool. And the establishing, wow. the establishing shot is like you see them in this rundown town, no one there, mm-hmm. and the first thing you notice is they're wearing bare feet, Ooh. and that really you know explains Ooh. a lot. So they have yeah. some cool elements there, mm-hmm. but it's mm-hmm. like it should have the timeline of the film should have extended the ending like forty minutes mm-hmm. and cut that from the be- cut that from the beginning because there's a lot of setup. Mm-hmm. And then it doesn't like it. It's just like this domestic drama, mm-hmm. and then they have like some thriller bits. But like, they could have easily had the standoff with the aliens. Would have been so much more interesting. Yeah, maybe they like, didn't have know, the budget. If for I was it. in the, it had a seventeen well, million in, dollar budget. In that world. Wow, that's a low budget though. In a box office, yeah, uh, ninety two million. Boom! There you go, man. Fucking yeah, nice little lot. horror movie. Ah, yo. So that's fucking cool. So I think I'm gonna check that shit out, man. Now that well, I know it came the plot out at and the everything. Perfect time. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's gotta be so quiet. So, shh. So yeah. like I recently saw uh, the, the next film. It kind of looks a little bit like uh, a quiet place. Is a cure for wellness, which is this uh, the guy who yeah, did yeah, fucking uh, what is it? Pirates of the Caribbean and shit. And it's got that oh, Dan, you know Dane what? DeHaan. Yeah. What's up with okay, this just one? just to just to reverse segue for a second. Yeah. You know what you know what the alternate title for that film could have been? What a, a quiet place? What? A quiet PC space. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's got the same there vibe to go. it. Yeah, it's got the same vibe. Oh yeah. Same story. <laughs> same fucking story. It's the exact same. It's the exact right. same. So, so anyway, cure, yeah, cure for wellness. wellness yeah, yeah. Gore Verbinski. So what do you think? Whoa. Dude, I thought it was a crazy movie, but that Dane DeHaan was miscast. Everything he tries to do other than being a snarky little dude in Chronicle, it just doesn't seem like it works real well on my end for the acting. But like the story oh, the itself is character? really cool. Yeah, Dane DeHaan, man. He's, he's, he doesn't Let's play the these characters. Guy? Well, I think he's trying to replace fucking Leonardo DiCaprio It being like kind of like the rich white guy. You know, what is it kind of like? Oh, was DiCaprio supposed to do that one? Well, what I'm saying is he's he's trying to fit that role as like kind of like the the rich white guy, but he's not pulling it right. off well. And to me, it just kind of like well, sucked he, the he love out of a it. Bit, he looked a bit jaded in that film, yeah. Yeah, like he he sort he, of he looks doesn't miscast. have the same. Yeah, that's uh, true. I like the scenery that, in that movie a lot. Yeah, dude, I it made me Fucking get into amazing it. Yeah. castles and shit. Yeah, and the, the other thing though, like, it's like, come on, man! Like after the second time, like you you get like weirded out about the water. Like it's like, yeah. how did it take him that long? <laughs> like, okay, just normal situation. Okay, you're at somebody's house. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Okay, so you, normal situation. You're at someone's house. Mm-hmm. If they offer you water more than two times. Mm-hmm. You start to think that something's wrong. Right? <laughs> yeah. Here, have some water. No, no, I'm fine. Five minutes later. Oh, you sure you don't want some water? No, yeah. no, no, I'm okay. It's suspicious. Do you want some water? What the fuck's in the water? Yeah. Like, yeah. Th- this is like some fucking creepy shit now. Like, yeah. anytime more than two. And the guy offers him water. Like, it's like uh, fucking you no know, green eggs and ham. Like, would you like green eggs and ham? No, Sam and I. I'm like, would you like some water here nor there? No, I would not like it anywhere. 
<laughs> would you like water underground? No, I would not like it. The eels are found. You know, like, it's like, Ooh, not fun? bad. Nice, nice, nice. But okay, so there's one thing in here that I really did enjoy, and I'm glad I watched it. Probably, it's just like one of the best songs I've ever heard is in this movie. And it's during this great scene where this this main uh, female character, Dane DeHaan's like love interest, I guess, is at this bar, and uh, she starts dancing to this song on the jukebox, and it's this song called Oh yeah, that weird. Oh my god, man! Punk, German punk one. Yeah, it's like German, like uh, it's by Bilderbuch yeah. or whatever. It means coloring book in German. They're from Austria. This band, and like man, this jam is fucking on point, man. And it's like weird German, well, like definitely- techno. <laughs> It's oh so good. Yeah, it definitely had that uh, cool. That was one of the most interesting scenes in the film. Of this yep. coll- collision of worlds, mm-hmm. where you have these like poor German villager punks, yeah, and you have these like elitist Baroness daughter, and yeah. just how much vit- vitriolic hatred they have yeah. towards each. Well, that not not so much her because she's very innocent, but like mm-hmm. them towards her yeah and it's like this barn and they're like they're playing ramstein before oh it's dude just like really yeah. intense the soundtrack is that was good. a good scene yeah they could have done more with like i feel like a lot of that movie was sort of overstuffed they didn't really know where the story was going and yeah, they had I too many this. things going on so yeah. they had the main thing as being the conflict between the villagers and the the actual you know people running the place yeah then but, you know maybe that would have made it more interesting i don't know um, but the the whole thing i i get what you mean and i think it's because it's bogged down with the whole uh, impetus to get there which is like he has to find that one member of his business his like boss or whatever and that subplot drags out way too long and it goes nowhere so what I'm saying well, is it's like the golden fleece, but it just, it's like just, it's just done the, poorly. And I think that drags down the film a little bit. Yeah. Well, there's, there's, you know, like every film usually has to have one central thing to it. Right. So like mm-hmm. the screenwriting book I'm reading, they have a couple of them. One is like the monster in the house. So that's like mm-hmm. every ghost film, every monster movie, Anaconda jaws, all that supernatural films or, or like movies like Panic Room, like anything mm-hmm. where like you're in this space and some threat is coming in the space and you have to find a way to vanquish or destroy the threat. Mm-hmm. Any film like that is, they call it monster in the house. Okay. Right. And, yeah. and the house can be, you know, any anywhere or it can be outside. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. So that's one. There's another one, which is like all the uses of a MacGuffin is mm-hmm. called the Golden Fleece or mm-hmm. like the Iliad story where they're mm-hmm. going to get the object or get the person and bring them back. Yeah. But what what happens is, and then there's other ones like Genie in a Bottle is another example where this, this person's been uh, bestowed with magical powers or uh, a magical ability or some sort of awesome uh, advantage over everyone else. So like, click, I get that. Uh, yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, Blyer, Liar. You notice Jim Carrey has, every movie he's done is a Genie in the Bottle. Like 23... Liar, liar. Yeah, that's the true. Mask. Uh, well, that's Ace true. Ventura, like yeah, you know, pretty much yeah. every single one is the same archetypes, right? Yeah, yeah, I get that. So this this movie was the Golden Fleece, but it was also Genie in the Bottle in the sense that y- you can have a movie where it, you're not bestowed with a great power; you're you're actually bestowed with a great curse. So yeah. it can go the other way too. But when you have two sort of meta stru- narrative structures but that Peter, are fighting for attention, I also attention. think Monster in the House applies to this as well, right? Because there's the whole right. leeches and stuff. So there's like three, in fact. Like there's a lot going on well, here. Well, no, I think I think the leeches are are part of that, like uh, genie in the bottle. It's like this negative curse, and and you know the. Well, yeah, I, I guess the leeches yeah. can be the monster in the house. Yeah, absolutely. Like, they he, definitely there's haunt. so many. There's so many elements that are fighting and vying for attention. And it plus, bogs down, like, yeah. Plus, you don't... You like, why would you introduce the protagonist as a sociopath that's not <laughs> likable? You <laughs> that's to care true. about the story, you have to identify with someone. Who are you identifying with? You know who you identify with the most in the entire film? is a guy who dies from a stroke in the beginning. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, He's yeah, I remember. He's the yeah. most... Yeah, he's possibly the most human and likable character in the film. And he like, dies. He's a nice me. family yeah. man who's like working hard and just trying to support his kids. He dies of a heart attack. And then it's just straight up sociopaths and fucking incest, like crazy uh, psychos. And yeah. then these like rich 
insane people and then like German punks <laughs> that are also psychos and then this complicit driver who's like helping this whole feud industry like there's yeah. no likable characters in that a whole entire movie except for maybe the girl but the girl yeah she's like she's a, good kind of a I was freak. gonna say so you you don't really but then, it's it, it's more it's more pity like you feel mm-hmm. bad for her yeah. it's not like oh she's awesome it's like oh shit she's fucked up like yeah you know yeah. you, you kind of have to have you kind of have to have admiration to to have that likability there's like, no the, admiration the likeable, yeah the only respectable character died in the first five minutes of the film respectable i like i like likable yeah that was well, a likeable, funny intro what, though whatever, whatever respectable is, is, but, like, everyone else is no respect anywhere else in this film but uh, like the dawn but then you know it, it really took like a dark turn like it was kind of weird it was kind of weird and I was into it and then it was like okay like they're they're putting all the bodies in the aquifers and these eels like they just it was like fucking Guillermo del Toro with the eggs it's like okay I get it there's eels it's like, beautiful though so man. many it's fucking yeah, crazy the, the cool. eels are just fucking ravishing like the, the bodies in the mine Ugh. and then it was like the then the guy goes and he's trying to like you know like rape his his like daughter or something. Yeah, that was like, there's know, the like, other oh, monster. Yes. Jesus Christ, there's two man. Fucking. Well, then he rips off his face and he's like the swamp monster from <laughs> Shape of Water. It's like fucking this green like freak. <laughs> you're like oh well, yeah. Eat like, fucking you head know? off. And, yeah. and then and then they like burn him and then the, the whole building burns down and then it's like okay the end of the movie too was so shit where they just like they okay, write off back right here. you come back here and then he's like lock hot <laughs> what and <then> smirks <laughs> and and keeps biking it was oh like, i remember they so keep hacky. biking uh, I no it was it. so hacky it's like get in the car now lock hot lock hot oh yeah i remember yeah he did oh, yeah, he's like, like fuck you i don't need pal- you guys I, oh, yeah okay. i like face face palmed what is, the, what is the guy gonna do? What is he gonna do? Like his mom's dead. He doesn't have any. He doesn't have anyone. He's in fucking Switzerland. These, he's got like, that German girl pop, though. He's like got her on the back of his the motorcycle. The punks want to kill him, and then they he's got do. this like ice. He's got like this isolate child who like fucking barely has a conception of language. That's true. You know, but he's, like, it seems like what? they're gonna. They've got a bright future. At least hopeful. Yeah. A little bit of hope at the end of that. Not too bad. Well, it seems like a lot of these sort of movies, like, uh, you know, same same with Shutter Island. And uh, there's a couple other ones that sort of fit in the same thing, where it's like you discover this conspiracy. It's so hard to end them, right? Yeah. Ooh. Like, I feel like that's the most challenging part. It's like, with Shutter Island, I don't feel like it. they, you know, they, they kind of played around, oh, is he crazy? Is he not crazy? Yeah. I, don't, I can't even remember how it ended, but, like, it seems like those are really hard movies to try and create a finale to. Okay, I got an idea for you. We were going to talk about, uh, this is a good segue into Source Code. Remember you were talking about Source Code, and I think a big part of that yeah. movie is that crazy fucking finale that makes no sense whatsoever. You know what I'm saying? Remember that? It was a good movie. I think, I think, it, I think it made sense. What, that it creates an, uh, an entirely new reality? <laughs> Just out of nowhere? Just like, boop, there you go. Everything all packaged up. Everything's cool. Well, so so, I think that like okay. So the base based on like I'm I, based on the reality of the film. Like inside, like if if we go inside the film and what it purports and the like, use not using like objective logic, but using the logic within the premises presented in the film. Mm-hmm. They didn't present. They didn't present the what do they call it? This the source code is eight minutes. But they didn't present it as a simulation within a computer. Mm-mm. They presented it as like a wormhole or something to a reality that only exists for eight minutes. Yeah, yeah, but it's the whole thing right? with the Jake Gyllenhaal. Doesn't something happen to him where he is like in that person's consciousness or whatever? Like he's there forever. He like replaces that person just completely, well, <laughs> which is well, so yeah, fucked so- up. <laughs> Well, so well, no, but the person dies anyway, or no, he doesn't. He just took over his life. Yeah, yeah that's pretty fucked up. That's pretty fucked up, dude. What do you think well, yeah, about I that? Mean, like, well, you know, they're gonna have like a scene 
like you know, like you you have the title card three months later, and he's gonna yeah. be out getting a bagel or something. Yeah. And people are like, hey, hey, James, hey man, what the hell? We were supposed to go skiing, and he's like, oh fuck, and he's like with some other girl. He's like, what what happened to your wife? You got kids? They, she she yeah. couldn't afford the, like they, they they had to foreclose the house. Like they're on food stamps, and then just like and he's just like, oh wow, I feel like a dick. Yeah, you know? it's he's a like, pretty you gotta, you gotta man up, man. You need to take some responsibility here. Yeah, you he know? saved he's the like, world, oh, but whatever. Yeah, he saved. Chicago. Fucking Jake Jelly saved Chicago. But see, from a narrative point of view, that's just too complicated. So they're like, fuck mm-hmm. that. We can just not deal with that shit. I mean, it's okay. I you mean, it's, it's a great, it's a nice, cute ending. You're like, oh, that makes, oh, happy, happy. But from a, I don't know. If you look it, a little like deeper it was, at it. Yeah, they, they were trying to do this soppy sentimentality thing. But I don't think sometimes when they do it, it's like really like, okay. But this yeah. one was just. It was just before the line. I could see a couple of those lines that they did. I was like, oh, come on. Come on. That's fucking stupid. Sinbad but was like, in it? Yeah. Wasn't he in it? Or like Russell? Who is, who is it? Russell Peters? Russell Peters. I didn't get that at all. That was no. so fucking weird. It's I like, bet you can't make think, these guys laugh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, no, come it's, on. It's like, was he blowing somebody? Or like, did his manager like put him attached to the script? Like, was he... Like, you know, <laughs> he was like the... He's the proverbial foie gras being shoved, or the, the goose feed being shoved down the throat yeah. of the producer. Yeah. You know? And you have to pay You're Russell just... Peters. <laughs> but it's it's like, what was the angle there? Is he trying to get into acting? Because going in a film and playing yourself isn't acting. He was playing himself? I thought he was just playing, like, kind of like a well, yeah, version okay. of he's, himself. He's playing, he's playing a generic comedian. Yeah, but that's it's like that. you. That's like that's not acting chops. No, like, that's not acting chops. Okay, no. just he played the exact same thing how he normally is. The only difference is they didn't say Russell Peters. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what it difference. was. <laughs> they didn't. That's yeah, exactly he wasn't what it was. It was like, but it was stupid because it's like okay, if you're gonna do a cameo, do a fucking cameo. But if you're gonna yeah. do a role, then do a role. Why are you? Why are you playing a, a comedian, right? And and how does that help yeah. the story? That I don't think so it helped stupid. the story too much. I mean, it was a touching moment when everyone was like, oh, yeah, okay. He's laughing. He's making everyone laugh. Everyone's happy. But other than that, it was useless. Man, that was the biggest dope moment. It was just like a bunch of dopes like, oh, is it? You know, like yeah. people in the theater that think that's like, Think that's touching, and they like you know. It's like Homer Simpson would like cry watching that. <laughs> it's know? a good and moment, like, man. It swells. He, it it doesn't like I don't know. I I, I was not about it. I was like you were not stupid. about it because it. <laughs> oh man, well, it, just, it shatters the whole reality. They're talking about like space, space and time and physics and yeah. like changing timelines. And then you have some schlub doing dating jokes. <laughs> and all these fucking every people. Like clapping and shoving their face full like popcorn. You're just like, what the hell? This is a completely different. Like that's fine if they had a movie about that schlubby sort of stuff within the reality of that film it would make sense. But they're putting two polar elements. They're sh- like shoving them together. You have this it's super like a, high intensity uh, sci-fi, like, oh and then you have God. this schlubby fucking soppy bullshit. And, yeah, like together. It's like two movies met paths in a train, you know? Like, one's kind of like this yeah. B-level comedy starring Russell Peters, and then the other oh, one's an it's action like, drama yeah. starring Jake Action Jonah. drama thriller and comedy <laughs> schlubby <laughs> fucking bullshit. And you're like, this is like a bad date between two themes. It's like yeah. a Tinder date. Like a yeah. horrible Tinder date of two sub two different movies that are put together. That are so different. Yo, I watched this with Liam Neeson in it too. I was just thinking that it'd be, this is his kind of movie. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. But dude, th- this is a Liam Neeson movie. Any, dude, yeah. So you know what the formula is? What's okay? the formula? The formula what is, is transportation plus danger plus Liam Neeson. <laughs> Plus, it's got to be mission too. There's got to be mission involved in there. He's well, always no, gotta... but I mean, it's it doesn't matter. It's but this this is the formula of every single one: transportation plus danger plus Liam Neeson. Because every movie is like, okay, he's on an airplane and he discovers a conspiracy, and there's mm-hmm. danger, 
and he saves mm-hmm. everybody. Or he's on a train, mm-hmm. and he's a commuter on a train, and then there's a dangerous conspiracy, and then he fucking does the thing, ha ha, and he saves the people. Or he's uh, uh, his daughter gets kidnapped, yeah. and he has to travel to Europe. He's on an airplane again, and he's in a car, and he's going to save his daughter, and there's danger. It's a conspiracy. Oh wait, danger. he's on an airplane. And there's a dangerous conspiracy because the airplane crashes and the danger is with the wolves. And then he uh. saves one person. The Grey was actually the best Liam Neeson movie I've seen. That is a great one. No, well, no, no I because love that it's, it's like it's it's actually a survival story. And it's mm-hmm. it's not really a thriller. He's being stalked by the wolves, but it's it's like... You actually get to see a, a deeper level of vulnerability in Liam Neeson. You know, like oh, I might okay. actually die well, up here. You know. Yeah, you really suffer for him. But I think this is a good segue. I think we've talked a lot about the movies today in the Debonair Film Hour. But the Liam Neeson discussion is going to continue on next week as we are going to watch The Commuter and get back to you on uh, the whole Liam Neeson train. <laughs> no pun intended. Liam Neeson <laughs> is on public transportation and there's a terrorist. <laughs> Probably. I don't know anything about it yet. Liam Neeson is on a longboard in Santa Monica. <laughs> All right. Well, when a, when a plane crashes into the pier. In the pier? Myrtle Beach? <laughs> Myrtle Beach and Liam Neeson. <laughs> I have a very particular set of skills that include skateboarding. <laughs> go. Liam Neeson is a skater punk in Santa Monica Pier. <laughs> oh, that's good, sorry. I'm going a little crazy. All right, we'll tune in next week to get all that good fun. <laughs> The Debonair Film Hour. Until next time, I'll be to say. Film food for the mind. That was KFC Radio 1's Debonair Film Hour. Welcome to the Debonair Film Hour. Get your cigars and brandy and tune in for a host of conversations of films and why they're artful. And we're back. Welcome to the Debonair Film Hour. Mission Impossible Fallout. Mm. You gotta you gotta be skeptical of that subtitle card. What the fallout? Oh yeah. They always they always, they always do that. <laughs> Why do the producers like, okay, we need a title and then we need a subtitle. But it says so much more than just a number. But usually the subtitle has nothing to do with the actual movie. They dropped it though. They dropped well, the they subtitle. Dropped, yeah. They dropped the movie in the film? Did they no, say fallout? They it's did. It's gonna be a fallout. Yeah, it's just and you're like, like, oh, come on. No, no, it's just like, you're gonna experience the fallout of all your good deeds. I think Remember they that? should just do it as like, you know, Fast and Furious did like Fast and Furious 17. They just didn't yeah. give a fuck. <laughs> they didn't care about the subtitle. Well, the Fast you know, and Furious like, is like the most like cut and dry franchise. Oh, yeah. yeah you just, know exactly what you're gonna get. It's like McDonald's. It's like, I want that Big Mac. I want fries. Don't you go fucking around with that shit. No. Like, but this, this is this is a different this is a different uh mission impossible movie because there's a lot more uh a lot more things going on with the uh subplots and all the there's a lot of characters well, the mission going impossible on possible franchise has always been like you know trying to compete with james bond it's always like, okay we can't beat them on story so we gotta Mm-mm. do some crazy ass stunts yeah that's the compete. only way to do it so yeah. we gotta send tom cruise to space you gotta beat him up you gotta beat <laughs> him up like, too I went to space for this movie <laughs> Well, the thing is, like, James Bond is always kind of like, well, at least minus the Daniel Craig stuff, he's always been kind of like this, like, sur- like debonair kind of, like, high-class dude where, like, Ethan Hunt in the latest ones, he's just getting his ass kicked. Like, that's well, yeah, all it is. It's, it's sort of the suave, like, intelligence gathering. There's always, like, very gadgets. cool gadgets. Yeah. I, I don't think that the Mission Impossible, they're like, okay, well, we can't do too much gadgets because then yeah. we'll be riding in the coattails 
of James Bond. So we have to have the incredible heists. Incredible That's like heists. That's the key part of the franchise. It's yeah. just like all these heists, like in the first one, we had to like jump down that vault. That was the dopest heist. the lasers, heist. like that's yeah. so key. With the with the bead of sweat dropping, yeah, activating like the floor one, sensors. Or like in the second one, it's like breaking into the Chimera facility. Dude, that you know. Chimera virus sequence in the second yeah, one, was that great. was some grisly shit, dude. Yeah, or you know, in the third one, it's like they had to, uh, you know, go into the Vatican. Like all those things, that's what people want. They want the planned, well executed, with a little bit of a hang up heist. Yeah, exactly. And this is just like basically in this one, it was just like I'll figure it out. That was basically yeah, it was, was kind of like okay. <laughs> How many just, times did they let's say just it? Wing it. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's like, what's your plan? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, basically. And it that just, happened. It's sort of like just on the fly, and it's like that. That never happens. No, not in a Mission you know Impossible I mean? like, film. Yeah, no. If you consider, I mean, not that this is trying to be realistic in any way mm -hmm. but like you consider like the special forces or like the navy seals yeah they do like a year of training or more mm -hmm. like for one mission yeah like they have their regular training already for years and years and years yeah but they're so highly specialized and they run this situation so many times yeah it's not just like fuck it dude let's just wing it it's such let's a writing cop-out though yeah. it's yeah, just exactly. such a writing cop-out they're yeah. just like we we can't like have this thing it's just like all right let's just uh it had been just like, please don't let me die. And he's just like, I'm not going to let that happen. He's like, yeah. but do you have a plan? He's just like, well, it's like not James yet. Bond, like he's so more methodical about it. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of like that surgical, like in, yeah. you're out, you, you get it done. Yeah. And like, there's a little bit of a loose cannon. They love that. The what? spies that are loose cannons. The loose cannon spies? It's such a it's such an archetype now or cliche. Yeah. They're loose cannon Sanchez, you know? <laughs> they just sub in like James Bond or Ethan Hunt. Just yeah. in the screen. Everyone's play, going written, rogue. Like, it's like a meta screenplay for all spy movies. It's like, you're a loose cannon, and they leave a blank. And then yeah. you can just put the name of the spy in there. Well, we like a guy who can operate within the bounds, but also has a little bit of that, you know, that yeah. gray area wiggle room that we all do so He doesn't always love. toe the line, but he mm. gets it done. Exactly. Like, But, like, in terms of spies, like, it's probably the most slack... Like, yeah. you know, because, like, you just look at the different, you know, Bond and, like, you know, Mission Impossible, all the other renditions of spies. Like, usually when they achieve the mission, there's, like, maybe 10 seconds left mm -hmm. or, like, 15 seconds left. Like, MI5, there's, like, 30 milliseconds left. Exactly. And you just they, they waste it close. the very last minute, <laughs> you know? It's like, do you have ADD, man? Like, why are you always procrastinating on these missions? <laughs> Just wait till well, the, the last the possible, last possible second. minute. He's like, oh shit, sorry, I was busy with something else. Like, well, he dude. had the touching moment with the wife. All right, well, the ex-wife. So maybe we should get in the plot a little bit in this bad boy. You want to talk about the well, what's going on? Okay, so first of all, like Tom Cruise, right? Okay. What an epic phenomenon. That, yeah, that we have to start with you the Tommy to C. You talk about Tom Cruise. Like, what are his motivations? Yeah, <laughs> well, so do you guys think that he thinks he's Ethan Hunt? I think like, he... Maybe he yeah. actually, you know, just that he had it's like superman you know mm -hmm. like ethan hunt is him being superman he's he can be more himself as ethan hunt <laughs> i think so and he can as tom cruise yeah so you know as tom cruise everyone just like laughs at him for being a scientologist <laughs> and just like being really intense yeah and he's, more, to, like, he's more he's more ethan hunt than he is or tom like cruise. be athletic and like help people all the time <laughs> like i don't think tom cruise can sit idle <laughs> It's like, hey, Tom, let's let's just, you know, like play some Scrabble. He's like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> just books it, starts running, like climbs on a bus. And fuck you, like, I'm Ethan Hunt. Fuck? He's, he's like high hanging off a bus. Throws a smoke bomb and yeah. becomes Ethan Hunt and yeah, dips. Yeah, exactly. But, okay, so the thing about Ethan Hunt is he's like a death-defying stunt dude, right? Like Tom Cruise loves his stunts. He loves I jumping off smart, things. though. I mean, he got like MI5 to pay him or to pay for his helicopter training for like a year and a half yeah helicopter training is expensive as fuck man you know it's that china money like yeah, alibaba yeah. pictures yeah they definitely were like thing. yeah we want to see tom cruise do some dangerous ass shit. yeah man they love yeah seeing tom cruise but like dude to go up in like a plane or a helicopter privately is like something like six hundred dollars an hour yeah because there's gas and the instructor and all that imagine yeah. a year and a half of that and you gotta that's pay like, tom cruise to do that yeah shit too. and you're paying him to do that yeah so that's like millions of dollars to pay a guy to do free helicopter lessons like, for like a five minute that's sequence. like a big that's like the biggest heist in mission impossible <laughs> it's like ethan hunt getting all those free helicopter lessons like that shit's crazy i like how that's we're referring so to tom cruise as ethan hunt now yeah he's just like he's become yeah. ethan hunt well i, I don't know man 
and there's probably some connection with Scientology too like in that he's literally the second in command in Scientology besides yeah. David Miscavige mm-hmm. and like they both I mean whether he's Machiavellian and he believes in Lord Xenu genu- like genuinely yeah. or it's just it's all a facade yeah. you know maybe he thinks he's saving the planet in every Mission Impossible movie yeah I like, think for I think real, maybe. You know? may, why else would he risk his life so much if he didn't have some sort of well, like he, higher? He just, he just wants Lord Zenu to take notice. He said, "Please notice you know? me, Lord." She's Zinu. like the hot girl in high school. He's like, "Please <laughs> pay attention to me, <laughs> Let Lord Zenu." He he <laughs> fucked up his ankle in this film. Filming it, oh, he yeah. like jumped off. Some, I, I'm like, sure shit. though he like was disappointed that that's the only injury he got. You know, he's just like, oh, fuck. Why couldn't I have broken something cool like yeah. a leg? <laughs> like, I had to break my ankle with like a dainty injury. Like, I think that's badass. He broke his ankle. But I'm just saying, Dude, like, for, for him, like he's fuck. just like, oh, like... I don't really yeah. want to share that. And then people leaked it. He's like, oh, dude, my ankle. Oh, man. Like, you break a couple ribs or an arm. Like, dude, that's, that's a so, story. But like, yeah. I broke my ankle. It's like breaking your your foot. And, you but know, like, yeah. Not noticeable. Even right? in Oblivion, man, like, for some for some shitty, like, B-roll shot, he, like, almost, like, fucking got, like, a brain contusion because, like, the... the what, what was it? Like a motorcycle kind of like car? Like when he, was, was sand he was dune. going fast on a machine. Yeah, and, and then he just like up. banged his head. He's probably yeah. got a lot of head concussions, Ethan. Yeah, well, probably that's why he's doing all this crazy shit. He's just like, he's completely out of it. Fuck, yeah. Yeah, dude. Well, there's, there's just something to be said about that. Like some people literally become like adrenaline junkies. I think he is he, he maybe a little bit of a death wish too. You think he's sometimes, like, yeah. Well, I mean, like you look at those guys that climb like in Yosemite, and like mm-hmm. it started with just like you know uh, bolt climbing, mm-hmm. you know, or what they classify as lead climbing, and then they did free solo climbing. So okay. Literally no harness. So, and then they're like, okay, that's slightly too dangerous. Let's do free base climbing. Okay, what's free base? Free base climbing is where you have a parachute. So you have to get up to like a certain height, a certain height before you're safe, and then if you fall, you pull the parachute and you're basically base jumping. But at Yosemite, it's illegal to base jump. They have to decide if they want to pay like a ten thousand dollar fine. Oh, you gotta like cost they have to like deliberate it. about their trial, like uh, you know, because they're all like beatniks and they That's I don't hilarious. know if they have that much money. So. There's some good rock climbing in this film, but like the at the, the end, yeah. yeah, he had to, Tom Cruise loves rock climbing, dude. He loves he loves climbing shit. But so the the synopsis is what three Russian nuclear cores are stolen, and Ethan Hunt has got to like, oh, it's like yeah, find them. There's always like some big threat to the planet. And, yeah, you know now it's the nuclear stuff. So basically, he prioritizes his men over the, the plutonium yeah. and. They are able to take it, and then, you know, he's sort of at fault because the agent's like, well, why didn't you, you know, procure the plutonium and let your friend die? And it's like, mm-hmm. I stand up for my friends. Oh. And yeah. then, you know, you have the bureaucratic Bullshit. CIA that's like, oh, you shouldn't have done that. One versus many kind of thing. Yeah. And then they have to go and, like, do this trade-off to With find them. the plutonium. Yeah. And there's all these, like, nuclear devices. And there's this broker in England, and she wants to trade this old evil villain for Solomon the Lane who's fucking insidious dude that he's guy's, very good in that he, he's he has a, a soft good voice that's the other thing too is you need a good villain yeah in every uh, in every you know Mission Impossible or Bond yeah then you gotta give that villain a lot of time you need those mm-hmm. pivotal scenes like they mm-hmm. they use them pretty well but I feel like they could have done a little bit more like yeah. when you saw uh, Skyfall with the uh, What's his name? Christopher Javier Falls. Bardem. Oh, Skyfall was Javier? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, right, because right. Spectre was... Uh, yeah. yeah, so in Skyfall, he was actually a very good villain and had that scene where he's sort of interrogating Bond and, yeah. and you know, he talks about rats and, yeah. and, and all that. Like, that, you, you need that chilling villain stuff because, mm-hmm. you know, you, you set the protagonist against the antagonist. Mm-hmm. And this one, there was just like a lot of ambiguousness of whether they were good or bad. Yeah. And you had this, like, Captain America fucking chris hemsworth guy who's just like a jock who's like what is supposed to be this pretty boy and he ends up you know henry cavill yeah who played superman so yeah we won't spoil that but like he's just kind of a giant douche in the whole movie but there is one really great sequence in the, build, in the beginning where they halo jump 
into Paris. Yeah, that and, was pretty uh, cool. And it's one shot, so if you're into that one shot kind of high tension situations, that one sequence like kind of made like, the movie. Takes for off me. the like Ethan's mask and he's like, I'll "See you later." I was like, "That's such a dick thing to do, dude." Super dick move. Yeah, it's like, okay, we don't need that. And he's just like, "Wait, let's not do this. Let's wait but, a second. You know, like, fuck and, you." And then like the team, you know, like I, I feel like a lot of these Mission Impossible movies they've distilled the best elements. You have a yeah. heist. You have this high level facilitation of yeah. Simon Pegg and Ving Rhames. Always which high is level facilitation. Always key. Yeah. It's like you need to hack in that Russian satellite and order a pizza. And, <laughs> you know, like do all the shit. And he's like, oh, uh, and, then they, and they get somehow it get it done. They get it done. But usually yeah. they get it done convincingly enough that it's not just random luck. Yeah. Like in, in the last cut two, it's so close to the wire mm-hmm. that it's almost like. The, you know just a game of cosmic Russian roulette yeah where they just so luckily didn't catch the bullet mm-hmm. and it's like how long can you go before that luck sort of runs out it's yeah. like it's like fucking lucky charms or something yeah it's like they're not what I mean lucky charms you know and like yeah. Tom Cruise has got like a four leaf clover <laughs> in his pocket or something or a rabbit's foot it's like dude you were the luckiest man and Ving yeah. Rhames in this he, he looked like he uh, he stopped doing his Atkins diet or something he looked pretty heavy in that he's getting a little bit older and like this role he just sits yeah, around yeah I think maybe lot, they wanted know? they wanted you know those guys to look a little haggard but like Tom Cruise always looks like a million bucks he just he looks like he's still like 35 years old he probably he's found like some cloning the, technology like or amazing something. beauty products or he just cryo freezes himself every day yes maybe like he sleeps cryo in a cryo therapy. chamber yeah, yeah he just sleeps in a cryo chamber I mean he's like he's a f- in his 50s isn't yeah he? i know it's he doesn't unbelievable. look like he's he's that ving rames looks like he's in his 50s but in but terms like, of the story like first of all anytime there's a subtitle you know the story is going to be a mess i yeah. it's usually yeah. with about 75 percent plus accuracy mm-hmm. you see that subtitle you're like oh fuck yeah Watch so out. like they didn't have a very clean cut it was like a fatty steak like there was still mm-hmm. some good meat in there but there's a lot yeah. of fat that you're like dude i didn't pay for this shit yeah like just cut that out of there nobody mm-hmm. cares like they have you know like two head bosses there's like alec baldwin and then some random like woman that came off of uh black panther and like yeah. y- you know fine like it's, angela it's, bassett angela bassett name. like she she sort of her role was just to override alec baldwin oh yeah and just sort of boss everybody around mm-hmm. but it's like i don't know how that really helped the story and then you had the pretty boy guy where there's like a little you know Henry Cavill, something yeah. interesting there where they subvert it but you you really just want to see like one boss even if she was the boss and they took alec baldwin out you can't have two bosses man you can't have two bosses because then they're just bickering with each other yeah like pick one you know or maybe just you know fine it. she's just uh, off of uh you know black panther so so take her and get baldwin out of there yeah. or you know but just them bickering for 10 minutes it's like that cost production like probably 20 million dollars <laughs> for a little alec bickering baldwin. scene yeah man and you know alec baldwin's pretty badass like he maybe is. he could have been in the beginning or, or something yeah just gonna introducing buy it, you the know? new boss and you know and, and then there's just so many love triangles there's it's like and then you, Ving Rhames is in the love triangle there's a bit so of like many a surrogate dad there's so shit. many love triangles <laughs> yeah. it's like watching like fucking Midsummer Night's Dream like Shakespeare or something and it's like it's, oh yeah. you doth love me but I love her and it's like dude I did not pay for a love triangle. I paid for some dope ass stunts, yeah. high level facilitation, yeah. and like maybe one romance. Between, well, the thing about you know, like, Ethan the thing and about the main the, character, the love triangle is like you got to kind of pick up on like the previous relationships yeah. of the other film. And well, maybe it's through, the, the, the producers are trying to appeal yeah. to the girlfriends. You or, know? but like, like you don't pay attention to those the subplots for, of the previous five films. So like when <clears> this like chick comes in and she's like, they're oh, purely for story. Yeah, and, and you, you have know, no idea what's going on. Sometimes they are like you know kind of meaningful like they're usually a little bit fluff like the second one with uh N- naomi nardo fall or whatever don't with know Thandie, dude. Thandie newton oh it plays the love interest and like they oh, had a yeah. history before yeah. and mm-hmm. you know she's sort of undercover and he he feels yeah. guilty because he put her in there mm-hmm. and then you know she gets injected with chimera and that scene like Stay alive! Oh, I will yeah. find you. You know, yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, like all that epic music. There's some and the epic building moments. is on yeah. fire. Man, yeah. John Woo is the best, dude. Pigeons. He loves and fire. Dubs. That's and, it. Every yeah, dodgy. Yeah, and got every 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 movie he does, he's like, okay, I need explosions 
and yeah. I love doves. I want to see him direct another one of these. Oh yeah, because he's kind of perfect for it. Cause it's yeah, just like, his choice of music and everything. Yeah, those epic moments, and then you have the re resolution where he gets back with the girl. Like that stuff is key. But like all these other love triangles and the broker is like trying to kiss him, and it's just like. Yeah, that can you know, really know. You know, the best yeah. Tom Cruise meme is a girl just swoons over him, just ready to just ravish him, and he just like taps him on the shoulder. She's like, I'll see you later. And then <laughs> yeah. he just rides off into the sunset dude, he gets in like the a females, motorcycle. The balls, dude. What yeah. is it called? He's, I don't know. He what loves called. doing that. Oh, yeah. He, the, he just, the, the motorcycle ride into the oh, sunset. Oh, yeah. A little tease and then yeah. quick bail. <laughs> Get him nice and moist. He, and then just, well, he just, yeah, he just, you know, they, they fall in love and he's just like, I don't know. He always has this like quippy line, and they just bails, and they're yeah. all just like, "What? Like, I thought you liked me." And he's yeah. like, "I do, but I, well, not now." And not now. And they just <laughs> win, <laughs> and just drives off into the sunset, like Days of Thunder. Yeah. Like there's there's this girl like in bed, obviously like looking at him, like, "Come join me," and he's just like, "We can't, we can't." And but then why, just, Tom Cruise? And he just drives away. Because he's got bigger stunts to pull. You right. Know? He's, he's like, got... I have to defeat Lord Jesus. <laughs> A little bit, a little bit of action is not gonna. But that's like the whole thing with his wife. Way. He's just like, I'm trying to save the world, and I can't have a girl at the well, same that's time. What they, it's always that was the that, whole thing, right? Yeah. And then, yeah, they weave that into this one too. Yeah, it's like he's like creating this, like his all of his personal problems are kind of bleeding into these I am these Mission Impossible movies in a very hilarious way. I think so. Or yeah. maybe he's just written in his contract. It's like, will not Mac. I can't do any. <laughs> I can't do any makeouts in this movie. I'm too busy saving the galaxy. I don't have time for tail. I don't have time for anything. The only thing I have time for is very intense acting about saving the world in stunts. stunts. That's, That's all it. I want to do. Yeah. You got it? Okay. You got it. All right. So can you just do a little peck? No. No. It's not in the contract. I will walk off set right now. Do I, not can make save, me, I can save I can the mac. I can save the girl, yeah. but I'm not, not going to mac, mac the girl. I'm not going to do it. And they're like, okay. but Tom, it, it really will help the story. Come he's on, like, Tom. What like, are you afraid of, Tom? He's like, no! <laughs> he just gets in a helicopter and just bails over a glacier. He just doesn't have time for that anymore, man. I think he'd rather fake his own death <laughs> than just do a quick little, like, pack of the actress. You know, he's just not... Uh, maybe he's got melatosis or something. I mean, he's just got I don't real know, bad maybe, breath. Yeah, what is it? He's just, he's just too chivalrous. That's, he, that's he just can't thing. do it. He yeah, doesn't want to be... He's the knight. He's, his days of Mac yeah. are far off far behind him so, so yeah i mean it was a good movie it was it, lots of fat but a good old steak you know what i would have liked to see like get rid of that whole cia henry clavel we, okay, uh, angela that's bassett another point is and then one and then, agency yeah. you get yeah. you, one agency why do you like okay so there's other movies like that are about interdepartmental rivalries and that's yeah. very interesting like they had a little bit of that in zero dark 30 that they had dope, a little yeah. bit of that in um green zone which yeah. is really good with Matt Damon. Paul and there, that is a really strong archetype in that a lot of times when you have these attacks or you have these big problems, it's because these agencies don't get along with each other. No, they got agendas and the like best looking one out for each other. The best one for that was yeah. A Most Wanted Man with Philip Seymour Hoffman. Oh, that dude. was amazing. Yeah. In that, like, the, literally because of those rivalries, they had this crap catastrophic you know end happen mm -hmm. you know and so this Check one that movie out, it's, it's good, not though. really about that and that was just kind of a tug of war between these different agencies and it's just like dude nobody gives a fuck about cia this is all about imf dude impossible mission force yeah dude. that's all that's people want to see you want to see that you so, don't want to yeah, see that bureaucratic like, bullshit just just a little bit of a, a tweaking and and just distilling it a little more to yeah. those key elements more I more think, villain you know less obviously CIA. they're spreading the margins a little thin because they want to appeal to everybody yeah and they did appeal mostly to everybody it's just a couple little hangnails that are just kind of annoying so what's the uh we're gonna do an obscure rating mm -hmm. this is the hipster rating system what do you rate this i'd ro i'd rate this at a, you know like a, a nice sizable 12 wing uh, plate of like hot wings with some blue cheese and celery and carrot sticks <laughs> that does not make sense <laughs> So ex explain that. Why is it? Why? Well, why is it? You know, it's it's nibbling. You bite size story, and it's pretty flavorful, full of spicy flavor. But there's also points to it that you kind of don't want to eat because the hot wings, like the vegetables, you gotta eat those like vegetables. Dip it in some blue cheese, cool it down a little bit, and in the end, there's a lot of like shit on your hands. You know what I mean? A lot of residue. So okay, that yeah. was a hipster <laughs> obscure rating by Sebastian. Yeah, dude. But okay, so my thing is. Replace the CIA and Henry Clavel with more of that villain. That villain was dope. 
Solomon right. Lane is his name. He's got a really soft, snake-like, almost Snape-like voice. Yeah, and he's no, really see, dope. That, he did that well. He did the villain. The villain always has that sort of yeah, Snape or soft. like I can't even do it. Voice. Yeah, Voldemort voice. He kind of you know he he put his lips together really close, and he has yeah. this like kind of raspy. Like, mm, yeah, yeah. You don't know the yeah, yeah, yeah. It's real good. You know, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so it's pretty key. So what would you like to see out of like they're making another one for sure? Oh, they're gonna make them until he's like in a walker. Yeah. Okay. So like, what, what would you like to see? Uh, you want to see more? You want to well, see more I think, stunts? Like the different locations is always like that's the appeal for a lot of these spy movies. Is you oh, get yeah. a bunch of different countries, you get some cool stunts. But I mean, some of the stuff, like you don't need crazy elaborate, like you know, stunts. Like you should have some. But I think a lot of it, a Mission Impossible and James Bond that works so well, is like those social engineering things, mm, or like you yeah. know Charlie's Angels, or like all this stuff where it's, With the like masks. it's just a really yeah. cool plan. Yeah, like some of the best I've seen in that is Mr. Robot. Where yeah, like that scene where they try and break into Cheyenne Mountain. Yeah, like that's the real authentic stuff like that people do, you know, in these heists and. and you want to see more heist? There was almost you a see zero some heist. More clever, in this yeah. yeah, some clever social dynamics or clever reasoning. Not not just like ADD last minute planning. Yeah, really. It's just like we'll figure it out. Let's go. Jump. Boom. Yeah. And then 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 you're in the What's the so. uh in, in Scientology, what's the stuff that they think <laughs> is in everybody's bodies? Like the alien ghosts? What are those? Oh called? dude. Okay. Scientology. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you think this is something to do with it? Uh so okay. So Thetan? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to give it three Thetans out of five. <laughs> <laughs> That's my rating. It's three not thetans. quite 100% yeah. Lord Zenu, but yeah. it's, it's close. Oh, let's talk about Simon Pegg a little bit, though. Simon like, Pegg has really come into his own. I mean, dude, he's what's nice flashy. is you see a lot of funny guys. They try and make the transition into film. Into the field. Into, right, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that's the funny thing is he's literally and metaphorically going into the field. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like in the field as an actor and he's also, you know, playing a serious role. I mean, he, there's a bit of humor in there because he is funny. Mm -hmm. but, I mean, starting out from comedy and then landing, you know, a tech guy position in Slash one of these big light. films. He, he's got some gunplay in this video. In yeah. This movie. Well, it's it's like <clears throat> Patton Oswalt was in the Blade series as the tech guy. Oh yeah. You know, and and then you always have these comedians that try and do serious roles. Mm -hmm. Like Zach Galifianakis was in Birdman, and uh, you know Steve Carell is Foxcatcher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, that, there's some really good elements there. But uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that's a wrap. Thanks for listening to Debonair Film Hour. Oh yes, and we will see you next time. That was the Debonair Film Hour. Until next time, I'll be to say. Film food for the mind. That was. KFC Radio 1's 